Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I want to uh, start something new. I've been diving into expressions for After Effects lately and um, I've noticing, uh, I've, I've been watching a lot of tutorials of course and I've noticed that there are a lot of tutorials that explain one expression or one certain type of expression in After Effects, which is great. It's a great way to learn After Effects. But um, what I also notice is that it can be very handy to uh, see somebody work the problem. I see uh, expressions as uh, like little detective games you, you play, like uh, what's, what's the solution going to be? And uh, of course, there are a lot of solutions to uh, certain problems. And I think it's nice to get a feel for how people actually solve certain problems so you can see what kind of steps they take and um, maybe get some information on that instead of just getting uh, information on okay uh, a linear expression does this go um, so why would you need a linear expression why in this case would we need uh, a linear expression? Something like that. So uh, today uh, I have a case. I, uh, I have a case before us. Um, it's actually the case of a, uh, a bookshelf with shifting objects in it. Let me explain. Um, this is actually a case. Uh, we had a, um, uh, a project uh, we were working on. Uh, we had a bookshelf and we had a, f a few objects in there and we wanted to control where the objects were on the bookshelf but we wanted to do that with essential graphics so uh, i didn't want uh, if you imported a book the bookshelf in the scene with all the objects you you wanted to plant in there um, you get a whole mess and i just wanted one bookshelf with um, with different objects at every time and um well, that's a problem because uh, how do you uh, control where the object is on the bookshelf um, if you're just using uh, control control controllers? Um, so I uh, I kind of worked this problem in my head already. I usually do that. I usually um, uh, I usually get a problem like this and then I'll take a walk or uh, let, a, let it just sit with me for a while and then I'll come up with solutions. So um, there are of course a million ways to, um, uh, to make this uh, solution. Um, so what I, uh, what I actually wanted to do was um, maybe say, okay, this is uh, shelf one, and it could be here or here, shelf two, here or here, shelf three, shelf four. Um, let's say there are 10 different objects you could get on this bookshelf. Um, so I didn't really want a lot of control layers or controllers for, um, for one object, because let's say um, I had a checkbox um, I usually do stuff uh, with expressions on a control layer, on a null and then a control layer. So let's make a null, control, shift, alt, uh, y, null layer. And I usually call this layer control. And uh, this is my default workflow. So uh, there is always a control layer. If I'm using expressions, there's always a control layer. You know where to find it, you know, that's, that's a layer that's going to control everything in the scene. Um, so let's say uh, I would make a checkbox control for the dome. Here we go. And I could use, I say, uh, dome on or off. And then I would have an opacity linked to, um, to the checkbox. Now, there's one thing, it's on or off. Great. Um, and then I could do a slider for like the X position. So um, I'm just going to run through this real quick. Uh, so a slider. And I would say dome uh, X position. 
but of course i also have the y position so i could i could do a dome y position and then i could um of course uh, use a linear expression between these values and possibly do a um like a slider for uh if it's one it would be shelf one if it's uh two it would be shelf two you could rig something up like that the problem with this solution uh, i have is that if i have 10 objects uh, i have three controllers uh, controlling one of the objects so i would have 30 controllers uh, controlling uh, all the objects so that's, that's going to be a mess um, next to that I don't really like sliders I have to say um, the reason is um, you usually don't look we first we got like a slider and it was great and we could use it for everything but let's say uh, I have different hand positions and you rig something up you have like 10 hand positions and you rig it up to a slider and you say okay slider one is uh, hand uh, open slider two uh, or like slider uh, value two is hand closed and you give it off you give that off to somebody else he will he will have no idea what the slider will mean so uh that that's where i would say a drop down menu comes in because then you can make items with different types of uh, names so you can say hand open and close and the person that's controlling it knows what he's actually doing um, so that's why I don't really like sliders <coughs> excuse me um, so I I, I I thought about what kind of control I wanted to use and I, I, I came up with okay I want I want to use one controller to control the object's opacity and the x and y position in some kind of fashion that it would be reasonable for everyone to use it and of course what you can do is just open up your control controllers and see what kind of controllers there are um we could use a drop down menu i don't know why um but um so, sorry um so if the slider is not the way to go we could totally do that but um if we don't want it any we want a value to go from there to there and we want to go upside down uh we want to go it from from levels to the top i came up with or uh, at least my solution would be use an angle control why an angle control well um an angle control you can um set it kind of has two values it doesn't really but it kind of has two values you can manipulate so you have the first value is just the zero to 360 and then it goes to one and then goes to two it's like an elevator so maybe maybe that because it's it fancies me so it's um i thought that's a great solution for just one wrong controller for one object and um the first thing we're going to do is of course we rename it so it's dome control Okay, first thing we're gonna do, transparency or opacity, sorry. Um, because uh, when the angle is zero, um, the opacity would be zero. That would be very convenient. If everything is zero, you won't see the object. Very clear, very clear for somebody who uh, wouldn't, uh, who would, where does this object, bleh very clear for somebody who would work with this scene so um that's kind of really easy rig and a really easy if statement 
today we're going to write a expression for the uh, opacity let's open it up let's first create a variable uh let's see it's called angle equals and then we'll have to get the angle from the control layer so click the control layer it's gonna say it's an error because now it says angle equals which doesn't really equal something so pick with the angle control so it says this comp control dome control and angle and close it off with a semicolon now we're gonna write a small if statement and I will zoom in for you guys um, so if uh, angle equals double equal sign here zero what we want to do is curly brackets and this is going to be a small if statement so i'm going to put it on one line uh, if it's zero then the opacity will be zero else curly brackets 100. you see the object is gone the opacity is zero and if we're gonna over zero then it will be visible so easy enough so that was the easy part um now we want to do something with the um x position of the dome so uh, we're going to open the position using p and we're going to separate these dimensions we're going to first do the x position and then we're going to use the y position so right click and then we'll say separate dimensions and we'll <clears throat> first uh, set this object to the base. So I want to plan it here. So Y position is 920, and the X position is something like let's put 825 here. Okay, so the X position. Um, we of course need the angle control uh, and the variable we can also we can take from the opacity uh, expression uh, so let's go the, to the exposition once again angle control variable right here and um, yeah what what do we actually want to do um, we want uh, this dome moving from uh, this position, like 825, to this position will, let's say, 1000, um, when the angle will be rotated, or at least uh, gets from zero to 300. Um, sounds to me like this is a perfect job for the linear expression. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the linear expression. Is it's just an output zero? Um, I don't know if you're gonna uh, if you're familiar with the linear expression. There are a lot of good tutorials uh, about it. Um, the way I would explain it is that the linear expression allows you to do exactly what we want in this case. So uh, we have a value going from zero to three sixty. And we want another value, the x position going from a20 to another value. Um, okay, and now we're going to write our linear expression. So let's first type linear. And a linear expression um, has five arguments, let's say five arguments. Uh, the first argument and what uh, what really helps helped me uh, was get my head around the linear expression was okay we are now we are now in the x position this is the value we want to output uh, and whatever output this linear expression gives is going to the x position but we also want um, another value to be um, Uh, 
But we now also need another value, which is the angle control, because we were talking about the angle control and we want the angle control going and uh, controlling the X position. So um, linear expression is talking and saying, okay, w what value? Um, what are we talking about here? What, 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 what can I work with? And I'll say, okay, it's, it's angle. It's a variable we created uh, here. And okay, what, okay, the angle is going from two values. So what's the first value and what's the second value? Okay, first value is zero, comma, second value, 360. Okay, and what do you want the X position to be then? Linear expression says. Well, um, we saw that it started at 825, and let's say it's going to 1100. So um, the linear, what the linear expression now again says is, okay, a linear expression, uh, let's look at the angle control, and if the angle control goes from zero to 360, so one turn, um, the X position will go from 825 to 1100. Let's see if this works. <coughs> Um, we can't seem to dome, dome now because the angle is set at zero. But if we go to one, we see that the dome is there. And if we're going to slide it up and go to 360, it goes all the way to the right side of the bar. Okay, so that's the first part. Okay, now um, I would say uh, we want to go to level one, which is... Uh, and that's, that's kind of tedious about this code uh, or about the angle control. It looks like it's going to uh, zero again. And then uh, you would think that it goes from zero to 360, but it actually goes 361 to uh, 720. It is one revolution. Um, so uh, it's not 100% what you think it's going to be. Um, Let's just rig up the uh, Y position to get to the second floor and see how we would do that. Um, because we're now at the zero, floor zero. Again, let's, uh, let's grab the uh, angle control because we're obviously working with the angle control here. Um, okay, so just in plain English, what, what, what would the Y position, what would you say to the Y position? Well. Uh, I have an angle control and uh, it goes from uh, 0 to 360 and like if it's between 0 and 360 uh, I want it at 920 but if it's at uh, between uh, 360 and 720 I want it on another value so we're gonna write some kind of if statement I guess let's let's just Try and work it out. Um, if those, if uh, angle, uh, I would say um, you can't really say is between two values. So I would say is less than. So is uh, smaller than uh, three sixty. Um, if angle is smaller than 360, uh, this value should be 3, uh, 920. Uh, sorry. Curly brackets. And uh, we could say, of course, else if uh, angle is smaller than 720. Let's say 1100. Ah, okay. So it actually works. Um, but uh, we have to go to the minus. So the, the dome is now here. And the angle is at uh, one revolution and six degrees. 
so uh, 366 and um 11 uh, of course 1100 is down and i want to go up so i need uh this value to be like 800 or something like that sorry 760 less 40 that's it 740 okay um so this actually works uh if angle is uh, smaller than 360 and else if angle is smaller than 720 um another value so we could just build upon this and uh, make multiple stages we now hit a snag uh, and what is a snag well let's uh, i'll i will show you if we go from uh, zero and this is also the i really have to hit zero to uh, get the object to disappear um it's always good to check like uh when you're when you're working with your own project um is this actually workable and i would say well the opacity um being this as an absolute number number uh, is uh, not really handy and i don't really have to use the negative angles so i could say equals or uh, is uh, smaller than and that's upside down sorry small is smaller than or equal then it disappears uh, and now if you go to the uh, minus degrees uh, it also disappears so that's what this is smaller than or equals zero so it's something um, more manageable let's go to the position um, and i'll show you what uh, the next problem is because um, when we are going from 0 to, let's say, 360, well, this is exactly what we want. And then we go to the second floor, and nothing happens with the X position. Why is that? Because the value is actually going from 361 to 720. And we didn't rig up this linear expression to go from 361 to 720. We rigged it for 0 to 360. Damn. So, I actually want to say, well, if it's less than 360, I want this linear expression. But if it's less than 720, I want it between 361 and 720. Well, we already made this if statement because we made it here. We just have to copy this if statement, paste it here, Whoop. and we can copy the linear expression, paste it here, and we actually we can make another linear expression and we'll just say well if the angle is between 361 and 720 still the same values it's just these values are different and now if we're gonna rotate the angle control you can see that it's moving across the second shelf and here we go if we're going down it moving across the first shelf and when it's hitting zero or less than zero it's it disappears let's go again we're going up and it's moving around the shelf and second floor well oh, and it's broken and it's broken because um, it's it's actually out of range. You usually get this error and you don't know what it is. Uh, now he actually doesn't know what to do um, uh, because uh, we'll say, we had we said well if it's 
smaller than 720 then do this and now he just doesn't he doesn't know what to do so else we could say um, value or something like that um, a value let's say just uh, 825 which is uh, there uh, sorry I have to syntax this of course And it doesn't work because you can't have an else. You can have an else. No, I have to close this off first. So, see what it is. <laughs> <laughs> See what went wrong. Sorry, um, I didn't. Uh, so these curly brackets belong to each other, and I I didn't add. I I just started typing here, um, added another curly bracket. So these curly brackets now belong to each other, and now these cur curly brackets all alone. So you have to add another one. And the same goes for here. Uh, it doesn't know. It's actually out of range. Um, we also set this so we can just copy this else code or we can say um, else else open curly brackets enter 920 let's do that so if it's it's uh, up too high it just goes back to the beginning so this is actually a small little rig with one controller um, to actually rig this up there's one more thing that I um, I thought about here is that I usually try to uh, create code that is uh, really easy to uh, copy and paste for uh, my own use and um, Let's say uh, let, let's say this this is going to be an insane amount of objects. So uh, it's not ten, but like multiple. Uh, then every time I would um, copy this, I have to when I copy this uh, opacity uh, uh, expression, I would have to um, give this this name like uh, uh, another the same name as the uh, new angle control that I created, but. If I'm gonna uh, hold up the same name convention, like the layer name is dome and the control layer is called dome control, then I could use do something like this, like uh, name equals. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, name is already taken. Uh, so um, say layer name equals this layer dot name and um, uh, from the top of my head I would say this would actually state that this is dome but I have no idea if this works so uh, what I could do is say uh, throw uh, layer name what it actually does is create an error um, and you usually don't like errors but uh, for uh, now we do because uh, throw actually allows you to call out a, a variable so I said throw layer name and uh, what it does is it just stops right here and just gives an error message naming the variable value so now I know that I actually uh, am correct and that this layer dot name is actually dome. So handy little th tip here to uh, add, uh, use throw uh, to name an error. Second tip I will uh, add you is uh, um, what, what really works with me is uh, I uh, have a uh, Google, um, it's very... <laughs> It doesn't have to be Google, but I have a document uh, with all kinds of expressions in there. 
and um, uh, for instance Freudy which uh, uh, which where uh, I just document like these little kinds of expressions which I uh, would usually forget and um, first uh, the document would say well an if statement you can write it like this and um, eventually it got um, more expand more excessive uh, uh, other types of expressions and sometimes I delete some expressions out of it but it really helps me to get a, like a, an own an own personal uh, document which I for myself curated and um, know where certain things are and I don't have to search the internet every time for the same uh, page okay so throw a variable um, so now what we can do is uh, we can um, actually put it here. How are we going to do that? So um, this is actually text because it's between um, these quotation marks. So um, I think I have to do something like quotation mark. Uh, I don't know if I can do layer name just here. No, because it's now it's text. So this is layer name plus control. Let's see if it breaks. <laughs> that's, usually, that's just my uh, default. Let's see if it breaks. Um, it doesn't break, and um, which means. Let's say let's see if we're if we're putting this to zero. Well, actually, yeah, this works. <laughs> okay, um, um, I'm surprised myself. Um, so what what did we actually do? Well, we now created a code that if there is another dome object, uh, we can actually very easily um, copy this code, uh, paste it, and if the name of the layer matches the name of the control, the start of the control layer, then it automatically automatically works and we don't have to pick whip stuff stuff to stuff. Um, so you you <clears throat> so this is actually uh, the small multiple linear expressions we're using for this. So this is, uh, I think, my uh, my solution. And this is a wrap for uh, the first case of our detective files, uh, the case of the shifting bookcase. Um, I hope I hope you learned something today. And I hope uh, I, I you went, went with me on this uh, down the rabbit hole and see how we uh, came up with this expression. And uh, I hope it helps you uh, create your own expressions and um, do some magic with uh, After Effects. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And uh, I hope to see you uh, in the next tutorial. If you have any cases for me, any case files to work, I'm uh, happy to uh, see what I can do for you.